Tom Gross is an international affairs commentator. He joins us now from London. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. Good afternoon. Well, Tom, a lot has been said about the economic effects of Brexit, but what are the global strategic implications for the wider world of the British decision? Well, I think there are quite a lot of uh, implications, which is why uh, stock markets and so on crashed for as far away as Japan. If you look at the world, um, the leader of the democratic world, the United States, has been turning in on itself following the kind of uh, the way the Iraq and Afghan wars didn't go to plan. And President Obama has also kind of hastened this uh, closing in on themselves. And I feel that whether or not, uh, whether um, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton become president, they may too uh, continue that trend of um, not being so engaged in Europe. So it's very important that the European democracies um, stick together. And Britain is one of the most important of those countries. And it's very important important for Britain to, to, you know, to engage in Europe, despite all the problems of dealings with some of the Euro bureaucrats of Brussels, Europe will be much weaker. And those um, powers that are not good for the democratic world, such as the regimes in Russia and Iran and so on, are quietly and not so quietly welcoming the British decision to leave the European Union because it's a way of weakening the democratic world. So although lots of people, including myself, are not European Union enthusiasts, I'm not a particular fan of the European Union, yet the world and the Western world and the democratic world will be that much more um, weak without Britain in the European Union. Uh, also on a wider level, the whole kind of forces of globalization, which are on the whole a good thing, are, are in a way being peeled away, which is why there's been a lot of support also in the US for Bernie Sanders and, and Donald Trump and so on. And we, not that globalization is perfect, but without globalization, you have the forces of the far right, you have populism, isolationism, xenophobia, and so on coming to the fore. And if Britain can do it, and Britain was the mother of democracies, then those same forces in European countries and possibly in the United States can also come to the fore. Well, staying with Britain, is there any chance that the British decision to leave the European Union may not go through and yet be reversed? Well, there's certainly a lot of opposition in Britain, um, even though it was a clear vote. Um, uh, by at least a million votes to leave the European Union, the powers that be across all the main political parties are extremely um, nervous and, uh, and, and they see this as not just a political decision but as a, a strategic decision that could, you know, change the course of history. So, look, people are saying there's been no plan B by the government of David Cameron to um, take account for a vote to leave the European Union. And I'm not so sure. I mean, I actually know David Cameron since we studied, studied politics together at university, and he's a highly intelligent person. Now, I have a theory, which, which I've discussed actually with your London correspondent, Jonathan Sacerdotti, who also um, thinks this theory might be true, which is that George Osborne, who is the number two to David Cameron and was one of the candidates to succeed Cameron later has disappeared. We haven't seen him since the morning off the vote. So Jonathan and myself think that maybe, just maybe, Osborne is secretly in some European capital trying to negotiate some new terms with the European Union and then he will come back triumphantly to London and present these terms and Cameron, with the help of people in the British opposition Labour party who do not want to leave the European Union, they may try and somehow fudge this through and, and say that there's a new um, terms that Europe has offered Britain and Britain will not leave the European Union. I must stress this is completely theoretical and I don't have any evidence for it at all, but I can't quite believe that Cameron would just agree or the British establishment would just agree to leave the European Union. So I wouldn't be surprised if something's up um, behind the scenes so to speak. Yes, certainly a lot of surprises. Uh, Tom Gross, thank you very much for joining us from London this afternoon.